Um, and we do not have much time, my friends, and our singular focus must be on reining in Israel's aggression on its neighbors and on getting an immediate ceasefire in Gaza to stem the catastrophic situation facing 2.3 million people ahead of another bleak winter. We have also called this press conference to remind everyone that history uh, uh, has not begun on one day. This is ongoing uh, for not only 365 days. Uh, we shall uh, 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 not just remember the horrific events of the last year. We need to put this into the context of 28,000 days of denial of Palestinian rights ever since two-thirds of the Palestinian people were ethnically cleansed from their homes and lands in the Nakba of 1948, never to be allowed uh, to return. And it is a reminder that almost 80% of Gaza's population are refugees who were ethnically cleansed at, at the time of the Nakba. 28,000 days of the denial of Palestinian rights and 67 years of an illegal occupation. We need to understand that the issue of Palestine cannot be resolved if we do not resolve the root causes which, in addition to the right of return of our refugees, includes the Palestinian people's right to self-determination in a state of our own. Which Israel has made absolutely clear, it will never support the most recent vote in the Israeli Knesset unequivocally confirmed this position. We do not support and will not allow the creation of a state of Palestine, the piece of legislation in the Israeli parliament stipulated. Friends, if there is one thing we can all agree on, it is this. There is no going back. Uh, if you want to look back, you will only find atrocities, decades of atrocities committed by Israel. This is a moment to look forward. And we do, as Palestinians, uh, want to look forward. And the question is, what do we want? What is it? What is this whole fight about? To live in peace and dignity and have our rights, to see a better future for our children, just like everyone else. It's as simple, as humane as that. And what does Israel want? Do they know? What's the end game? Israel is engaged in a war not to defend itself or its people, but to defend its illegal occupation. And this includes a war on demolishing the entire global rules-based order. Israel's strategic outlook is entirely dominated by the use of sheer military power to impose its will rather than diplomacy to reach any agreement. This is why Israel has invaded Lebanon. It has invaded Lebanon to defend its aggression on Gaza. That's it. It is why it engaged in a war of extermination in Gaza to defend its occupation in the West Bank, including Jerusalem, of course. And let us remember that the, Israel is engaged in an unprecedented onslaught in the West Bank. You have seen what happened only yesterday in Nablus, the summary execution. You are following what happened in Dhul Karim and the use of airstrikes in cafes. You followed the invasion of the Jenin refugee camp and what is happening vis-a-vis -vis the settler violence, settler terrorism on rampage literally in the West Bank and the unprecedented levels of land appropriation and confiscation in the West Bank. And the numbers speak for themselves, my friends. Nearly 42,000 Palestinians or almost 2%, 2% of Gaza's population have been murdered and the Lancet produced a conservative estimate, putting the real figure, including those killed of related causes, because they cannot get medical attention or from famine and disease, at over 180,000. 90% of Gaza's 2.3 million people, that is 1.9 million people, have been displaced from their homes, and not just once. Many, multiple times, just this week, Israel issued a new evacuation order for the north of Gaza, declaring that everyone still there, an estimated 400,000, must move south. They aim to depopulate 
the entire north. Gaza's health sector has been decimated. According to the World Health Organization, some 1,000 health workers have been killed so far. Just 17 of Gaza's 36 hospitals are still in partial operation, but with dramatically reduced capacity. And this while the UN estimates that more than 22,000 people have suffered life-changing injuries and imputations for which there's simply no care. Israel has deliberately targeted the education sector. 80% of schools now and every single university in Gaza has been bombed or completely destroyed, leaving 625,000 school children with no education for the second year in a row. Industry, agriculture, public libraries, bakeries, infrastructure, international aid agencies, Israel has targeted them all. 